If you're into self-development or health optimization to any degree, you've probably seen clips of Andrew Huberman floating around on the internet. He's a neuroscientist at Stanford University, and he has a podcast that's chock full of productivity gems when it comes to fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle. And I think I even heard someone he interviewed say that it's a thing for girls to want Huberman husbands, quote unquote, who do a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. I don't really use TikTok, but I'm sure you can go very verify that. I think it was one of the episodes that Chris Williamson did on his podcast. But anyways, I've been listening to a bunch of Andrew Huberman's podcasts for a couple months now, and I wanted to make a video that compiles his most helpful tips when it comes to boosting testosterone naturally. And I listened to hours of his content to throw this video together. So in this video, I'm going to summarize all of Andrew Huberman's testosterone boosting tips in 14 minutes. And I am super excited to share it with all of you. Let's go ahead and dive in. If you're new here, my name is Ben Richardson. I'm a personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, and a chemical engineer. And for years, I suffered from poor health and low testosterone levels from being fat and overweight. And it wasn't until I went through a pretty nasty breakup in college that I really started to get a grip on my life. So I'm here to share what I've learned along the way with other men so that they can improve their health and boost their testosterone levels just like I did. And I do post videos just like this one every single week, so make sure you subscribe so that you're not missing out on any of my latest content. Okay, I'm just going to jump right in. I'm also going to encourage you to stick around for the whole video because I'm also going to give you strategies to follow as we go. I mean, I could just say that building muscle is going to increase testosterone, but that doesn't really help you or give you any kind of game plan to follow. So this video is going to be both informative and actionable, so you really don't want to be missing any of these. The first thing that I'm going to talk about that Andrew Huberman talks about on his podcasts is sex. Guys, boinking more often has been shown to increase testosterone levels by as much as 70%. And even just watching other people boink can lead to a 10% increase in testosterone. Now with that being said, I would not suggest that you go firing up all those dirty websites to get your testosterone fix. That's probably just going to do more overall harm than good. Now Andrew Huberman usually avoids talking about his personal opinions regarding the morality of doing these things or abstaining from these things. Things, which is fine because he's a scientist and his goal is to make information available to the public, but I'm a little bit more willing to throw in my two cents on the matter. And I think things like porn use and hookup culture and just treating sex as casually as our modern society does is hurting all of us. Not to mention all these dating apps and social media platforms, they get us so addicted to constantly exploring options and looking for the next best thing. Our society is at the point where we're so much less willing to commit to anyone or anything because there's always another option right around the corner. So what I am also not encouraging you to do is to go firing up Tinder and just go bang as many chicks as you can to increase your testosterone levels. If you're looking to use sex as a means to increase your testosterone rather than to build a genuine connection with someone, I'd say just leave this one alone. People aren't objects of pleasure for you to use to optimize your hormones and leaning into the whole hookup culture and non-commitment culture culture, that's just going to make things worse for you and whoever you get involved with. Okay, so something else to focus on if you want to increase your testosterone naturally is nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is important because your sinuses play several key roles in cleaning the air that you breathe, as well as using the oxygen as efficiently as possible. When you breathe through your mouth, you don't capitalize on the roles that translate into optimal oxygen uptake. Your nose knows best, bro. Really, the only time you need to breathe out of your mouth is when you're doing intense exercise that demands heavier breathing. So if you're eating food, chew with your mouth closed and breathe through your nose. If you're taking a sip of water or coffee or whatever it is that you're drinking, breathe through your nose. If you're brushing your teeth in the morning, breathe through your nose or before you go to bed at night. Anytime you find yourself breathing through your mouth, catch yourself and correct yourself. You want to make it your goal to become a nasal breather throughout the day so that you breathe through your nose while you sleep at night. In fact, more often than not, sleep apnea is much more common in mouth breathers than nose breathers. You sleep every single night for seven to eight hours, hopefully, and you want to spend that one third of the day breathing out of your nose, not your mouth. So piggybacking off of the last point of sleep, another thing that you can do to improve your sleep, which will ultimately increase testosterone naturally, is to monitor your light exposure. You want to deliberately expose yourself 
to natural light during the day, and then reduce exposure to all types of light, especially artificial light at night before you go to bed to improve your sleep quality. So managing your exposure to light like this is going to program your circadian rhythm to sleep better at night and have more energy throughout the day. Light exposure essentially signals to your body whether it's time to be awake and alert or relaxed and ready to sleep. Best advice I can give you here is to just start going for more walks outside during the day and limit your exposure to light, especially artificial light, an hour or two before you go to bed. Now I want to dive deeper into walking outside specifically because you're going to benefit from doing this in several ways. First off, you're going to get more vitamin D from natural sunlight, which is by far the best way to get more vitamin D. Supplements are great and all, especially if you have a vitamin D deficiency, but you can't beat that good old-fashioned vitamin D from sunlight. Secondly, you're going to burn some additional calories from walking. Walking is actually my favorite form of cardio because you not only burn a few hundred extra calories per day, depending on how much you walk, but walking also has a very neutral effect on your appetite, and that's going to make it much easier to adhere to an effective nutrition protocol. If you're super hungry all the time from doing all this intense cardio, then it's going to be pretty hard to muster up the willpower to stay away from those no-no foods. But if you're doing something like just walking, you'll burn some extra calories, and it's not going to leave you with a ravenous appetite at the end of the day. And then lastly, walking is also great for improved blood flow. Getting up and moving around more throughout the day is generally going to improve how well blood gets transported throughout your body. This actually helps a lot with workout recovery because blood carries nutrients to all those biological tissues, and that's going to help repair them faster. So going for more outside walks throughout the day is going to do wonders for your overall health. There are tons of benefits just from doing this, so make it a priority. And in fact, this is so important, I made a whole video on how to boost your testosterone just by walking. So if you want to check that out, go watch it after you're done watching this one. And by the way, if you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying it or finding this information helpful, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up real quick while you're watching. All right, next up is heavy weight training. This is kind of an obvious one, but I emphasize heavy weight training because getting stronger has a particularly positive effect on testosterone levels. Don't just walk into the gym and toy around with weights. Track your workouts and focus on progressively lifting heavier and heavier week by week. That's how you build strength. I recommend you hit three hard workouts per week on non-consecutive days, meaning you never work out on back-to-back -back days. So for example, you can do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but you're leaving a day between your workouts to rest and recover. Heck, a great fat loss strategy is to just do this and then on your rest days do a ton of walking and you'll burn a ton of calories and every single workout you'll walk into the gym feeling fresh recharged and ready to lift like a freaking beast reverse pyramid training is also one of the most effective ways to get stronger and build muscle to explain what this is I'll contrast it to your typical standard pyramid training where you start with low weights and work your way up in weight with each set that you do so for instance let's say you're doing standing dumbbell curls you'd probably do something like a set of 10 with the 20s, a set of 8 with the 25s, and then a set of 8 with the 30s maybe. You're climbing up the pyramid of weight with each set, so to speak. With reverse pyramid training, as the name kind of implies, this is when you do the opposite. You're going to climb down the pyramid with each set that you do, meaning you decrease the weight with each set instead of increasing it. So going back to our example of standing dumbbell curls, now you'd start with the 30s for 8 reps, then do your next set with the 25s, and then your next set with the 20s. You're climbing down the pyramid. Now you still want to do a few warm-up sets before jumping right into your heavy set, but training this way allows you to capitalize on the freshness of your body. When you use traditional standard pyramid training, by the time you start lifting really heavy weights, your body has already been partially fatigued, and because of that, you can't actually lift at or near your body's strength potential, and that's how you get stronger. You gotta push that envelope weak after week. Now, if you need a workout nutrition protocol to follow, my coaching program is gonna be right up your 
your alley. So to learn more about that, head on over to the link in the pinned comment down below and fill out the quick application form. It takes about two minutes and I'll reach out to you. And I take applications for this because I work pretty closely with the people who go through this program. I'll customize your workouts and your nutrition plan based on where you're at, but I really only have so much bandwidth as an individual to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're interested, go ahead and go down below and fill out that quick form and I'll be in touch with you. All right, next up is supplementing with creatine monohydrate. Creatine monohydrate can potentially increase dihydrotestosterone, which is the more potent cousin of testosterone. DHT has two to three times higher affinity to androgen receptors than testosterone, and it remains active for about five times longer as well. And for those of you who didn't pick up on it, DHT is dihydrotestosterone. However, this is also why it's commonly thought that creatine monohydrate can cause hair loss. High DHT levels are associated with hair loss and male pattern baldness, but this is one of those things that just kind of depends on a lot of different factors. Genes in particular play a huge role in what happens when DHT levels are elevated, so I wouldn't automatically conclude that higher DHT levels are a bad thing. I've even seen studies like this one that show that men with higher DHT levels actually have a 35% lower chance of going bald. I've kind of concluded that this is more of a genetic thing. It's kind of like how tall you are. There might be some things that you can do, but your genes are going to be a big driving factor. But anyways, creatine monohydrate is a very well-researched and safe supplement to take. Tons of great scientific studies can back up its efficacy. I can personally back it up too. I still take it and I always feel my best, my strongest, and my most energetic while I am taking it. And this makes sense if it can potentially increase DHT because like I mentioned before, DHT is a more potent androgen than testosterone. Testosterone has more of an anabolic effect, which means it tends to build up or repair biological tissues like muscle mass, whereas DHT has more of an androgenic effect, which essentially impacts secondary reproductive functions like hair growth and voice depth. Tungkot Ali and Boron have also been shown to effectively increase free testosterone, and Fadoja can potentially increase luteinizing hormone as well as testosterone. However, it is best to get some blood work done first and go from there before you develop some kind of rigorous supplementation routine. But I will say that I've used Tongue Caudalie and Boron in my supplement routine and I think they help. And if you're looking for a good one, you can go ahead and check out my review of Kino Mojo. That supplement has Tonkat Ali and Boron in it. I've definitely felt great since using that. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I'm just recommending something that I've used and something that seemed to work good for me. So that pretty much sums it up. If you still don't feel very well equipped to start working towards increasing your testosterone levels naturally at this point, then you probably would benefit a lot from applying for my coaching program. This is exactly what I help men with. Get back to living life with the same energy and drive they had when they were younger by helping them change their habits and educating them on proper eating and training to increase their testosterone levels naturally. So if that sounds like something you need to crush your goals, go ahead and apply using the link in the pinned comments down below and we'll be in touch. But that's all for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're new here and you've made it this far, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel as well. This generation of men have much lower testosterone levels than previous ones from things like poor diets, bad exercising habits, and increased exposure to environmental toxins. And even things like pornography addiction are negatively impacting men's testosterone levels. And all these things are becoming a huge problem in our society because it's stripping men of what makes men men. So if you want to join my community that's focused on helping men reverse this downward trend, as well as educating them on how to increase their testosterone naturally, go ahead and subscribe and turn the notification bells on too so that you're not missing out on any of my latest videos. If you made it to the end, I do appreciate you sticking around and I hope you got a ton out of this video too. Good luck in all your efforts to increase your testosterone levels. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.